congratulations, uh, Uncle. I know you said never to call you Uncle. Always call me brother, but congratulations, Uncle, on this wonderful day. It's well honored and uh, well deserved uh, for you and the community for you to, to keep the language alive and keep the history alive, not only in our personal family, but for the families to come. So enjoy your day. Listening to him every morning on CHRQ, you know, I think everybody well, knows who around. Alfred is. Maybe they don't put the associative name to him, but, you know, anybody opening the radio at 7 o'clock would know this is Alfred. Uh, Nepsadu ne julimta wegen dang westa wuk ne yadok luchye we ne we de demenet ke li gandang karamik se dane we. The national anthem. I learned it through him, listening to him and trying to, I always tried everything that he, you know, to get a lot from him. And well, uh, he was always so proud that he's, he's an Indian, he's a Mi'kmaq, he's, no. he never lost his tongue, he never lost, he knew, oh my he's God, the only no. one in the family that fluently reads and writes Mi'kmaq. My mother did, but he was the only one interested of all the children mom um, and dad had, he went after my mother for help on that, you know, and he was only a kid when he could read Micmac. Alfred Kondo Martin. Today, the citizens of Gespegawagi pay tribute to you for the inspiration you give to those around you and for your lifelong commitment to the Mi'kmaq language. Your love and support for your family will be your greatest legacy. You are always ready to lend an ear, offer a smile or a hug. Even when you are miles away, you always know when to pick up the phone to brighten up the day. You have become the rock and center of your family and friends. There's always a special one somewhere in the family. And he was special because he looked after everybody. I know he looked after my family, and he looked after my family. <laughs> he looked after mom and dad. My, my dad had seven sons they raised, and he's the one that looked after them. He's been, he means a lot to my family and to my own personal, to my own kids. Mm -hmm. And he's helped us a lot. That's why I can't say anything but nice things about him. And you're just going to get fed up listening to that because. He contributes to a lot of people, he touched a lot of people that I know. Um, like I said, growing up as a child, I always thought that's the way an uncle should be. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched what he did to my mom all the time, or everything that he did for her. I seen what he did for his mother and father. Um, the people that he loved, he cared about, uh, even his godchildren that are here, I don't know if you've spoke to them, or what, they come seek him out when he's around, uh, Lillian Becker. She'll always say, where's my godfather, where's my godfather? Uh, he's always been a great support. He's, uh, he's always been a great support. For the family, he's been a strong family member. He was always there for everybody. He always kept in touch with everybody. And he was the one that, you know, um, they always, all the brothers and sisters, from what I can see and when I hear them speak they always spoke Uncle Kondo was the wise one they always went to him for advice they always looked at him for they looked up to him he's yeah. like the family historian mm -hmm. he yeah. would he would call us up all individually and, and capture and make the family tree and tell stories about uh, his parents and his great his great parents and his great great grandparents so Many of us in the family have a very rich uh, tradition of knowing uh, uh, who our parents are and who their parents are and their parents are because he told us, you know, very clearly. And uh, still today I'd get a letter, uh, maybe once a year in the mail, and there'd be a postcard or a letter saying that th these, are, these are the family members, this is who, who you are, this is who the tree is, and that is the kind of individual. He, he has such a 
profound impact mm -hmm. on all of us. I like the fact that uh, he did uh, the opening song for CHRQ and every time when you hear it, it's, uh, it's a nice compliment to the Martin family, uh, you know, as well as my uncle Wally who passed away, the half and half, and my uncle Slim. Uh, so again, it's a Martin tradition, the singing, the Mi'kmaq language, they keep it strong. Very proud to be your niece. Congratulations, uncle. Best wishes for whatever else is in store for you. One time I had him in my basement and uh, I invited Frank and Pichi to come and uh, listen. We, just, we were just uh, fooling around, like talking, and you know, sometimes how you just, all of a sudden we just started having a little party more like, and Kando started playing music for us, Indian, English, yodeling. He was the best yodeler. I never knew that. Then he starts singing in French. That was something. I said, oh, Frank Sorby couldn't believe it. I said, oh my God, Kando. And that's how I really started inviting him to Hoboken to come every occasion. Like uh, Tina's kids were christened and we had big parties. So I said, oh, I know who will invite Kando, come over and he'll never refuse me. not a party without him. No. And uh, Kando would play music all night till four in the morning. Sometimes even the next day he has blisters. And, uh, but there was never a party without him. So mm -hmm. every occasion, Christmas time, he came to visit me when I asked him to come over. And he was living a high riser in Montreal, then he was a big shot then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had to face the door before you go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyway, that, that was it with uh, Congo and my family in Jersey. Yeah. And, uh, it was never a party when Kanye was not around, but he never refused. He was very good to me and my, my children. Well, yeah, I can tell you stories that they told me. Mm. And that's, I mean, I don't remember much being one, two year old, three year old or whatever, but uh, I remember when I was growing up, I always knew that he was special to me. I mean, uh, he'd come running, I'd go running to him as soon as he'd walk through the door. and. Yeah, he's always been my favorite uncle. Um, I guess when I was four years old, my poor dad, <laughs> he, uh, my mother just gave me a bath. This is so I'm told. I don't remember this, so, you know, I mean, I hope they never took this to heart. My dad, anyway. Uncle couldn't take it to heart, but uh, not my father. Uh, I was four years old, my mother had just gave me a bath, and after she'd give me a bath, it was custom for, my, for me to run into sit on my dad's lap and for him to smell me and tell me that I smelled so good. And he just decided to say out of the blue, you don't love me. And I said, yes, I love you, daddy. And he said, no, you don't love me. I said, yes, I do. And he said, well, how much do you love me? And I said, well, I love you so much. I wish you were my uncle condo. So he just kind of threw me off his lap and called for my mother to get me out of there. And I mean, I feel bad. But I do like now, but then I don't I don't remember that. But I do love my Uncle Kondo and growing up I always thought that's the way an uncle is supposed to be. Giving, caring, always there. Always seemed to know when I was having a bad day, would call me on the phone. I could I could expect a phone call him from him daily when I lived in Montreal. And he always tell me a silly joke to get me laughing. And uh, I don't know if he sensed that, or I don't know if my mother would tell him because they were constantly on the phone. I remember that as a child. They very close, my mom and, and my uncle. But I always thought that that's the way an uncle was supposed to be. The first time I met Kondo was about uh, 25 years ago. I went to visit my cousin in Montreal, and uh, he brought me to um, Kondo's house. And uh, there were a few people there from Listigutch singing some church songs and so I had a lot of fun got to learn some of the old Mi'kmaq songs that uh, Kondo still treasured and uh, sang a lot and um, so throughout the years every time I saw him I give him a nice hug and a kiss and he was always so friendly and happy and uh, and he was a jokester as a matter of fact the first things out of his mouth would be uh, uh, have you heard this one you know, and I start laughing like, oh no, I haven't, Kondo, go ahead. He always had a funny joke, and he was always very friendly and positive.